Hey everyone, so I'm back and I'm alone because my co-host is going to be presenting soon. So I'm going to, uh, to talk to you a lot. So I'm just going to let Vidush and Neha do their thing. See you soon. Hey everyone, uh, welcome to our first ever virtual developers conference. First time we are doing this. I hope it's going well and you guys are having fun. Uh, and welcome to our session so on mobile optimization using Google Technologies, uh, Google Analytics and Google AMP. Uh, myself, I'm Vidush Nama. I recently founded my own agency, Orion Consulting, where we focus on mobile and web development, along with a few IoT and desktop projects So um, here in Mauritius. Uh, and for fun, lately, I've been working on a few robotics and smart home automation projects just for fun and during the lockdown i was the tech guy at home yeah that's that wasn't nice but yeah and joining me today is neha Gunu. she is actually a digital marketing consultant uh, which is nice a nice addition to see to devcon this year i'm seeing someone from the marketing side coming in to talk about technology um, she actually recently co-founded her own startup, Le Fintech Limited, which, well, focuses on fintech. Um, and what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to hand over to Neha. She's going to do the first part of the session about Google Analytics. And afterwards, um, I'll join you guys again to talk about Google AMP. Um, just a side note, feel free to tweet your questions at VHNAMA or at Neha Gonu or both. Um, and at the end of our session, we are going to, well, take a few questions and, you know, discuss a bit. Well, till then, I guess, uh, cheers. Thanks, Vidush. <clears throat> Hi, everyone. I'm Neha. I'm a brand content strategy. So I'm the marketing lawyer, social media marketing and digital marketing. And I'm going to speak about mobile optimization today. So first time speaking at DevCon from a marketing standpoint. So what is mobile optimization? So we are going to talk of what is mobile optimization, how we can use it with Google Analytics, the tips and tricks and best practice practices that I'm going to share with you. Mobile optimization is as important as your SEO. So 77% Percent, this is based on statistics that smartphone shoppers are more likely to purchase from companies whose mobile sites and apps are well optimized for shopping. Everything from the design of your website to the loading speed is important. So, what is mobile optimization in formal words? Um, it is a process of adjusting the website content to ensure that the user had the best experience across mobile devices. You want your visitors to have the best customer satisfaction when they are browsing your website on their smartphones. For ex let's take an example where you, have to, you want to buy a headphone and you go on eBay. So you know specifically which brand you want to buy, what kind of headphones, what are you going to use it for, so, but as you browse eBay, um, the website is slow. The images are taking so long to open. And the, the process itself for you to buy the web, to buy the headphone and go to the checkout is very slow. So this affects your purchase in a way. This is why it is important to optimize the experience of your visitors so as to increase your website reputation as well. So many times we see that um, on desktop, websites have high conversion rates, but when it comes to mobile sites, they have low conversion rates. That is why this is where mobile optimization comes into place. Because not only will you lose customers, you're going to lose revenue as well and sales. So during the sessions, we are going to speak about um, how you can better optimize your mobile sites so that your website is trendy 
and your visitors are happy. Conversion rate optimization. What is conversion rate optimization? Those who are not aware with this term, it is to increase the percentage of the visitors on your website so that they can fill in a desirable action. For example, you want them to take an action as to fill in the contact form. So then you can have their contact details and convert your visitors into paid customers. So this is an action that you want them to have. Um, your website can have a lot of traffic, but low conversion rate. Of course, we want our website to rank, to have a lot of traffic, a lot of visibility. But at the end, you want paid customers, right? Now, the good news, of course, there's, there are always solutions which can help you to increase your convention rate. However, before implementing any solutions on your website, it is important to track. In the marketing world, Analytics are very important. Analytics, metrics, they are very important. So how do you track conversion rate optimization? Simple as that. Sign in into your Google Analytics. You'll find audience, technology, and mobile devices. There, you can compare also against other met metrics. So let's see um, what solutions you can use to better optimize your website for the mobile version. All right, mobile speed, of course. Mobile speed is very important. We all know, we are all aware that customers' expectations have grown over mobile. It is much more easier to browse through website um, to look for something via our smartphones. It is more convenient, it is more quicker. And of course, you would like your mobile to be, um, to have a rapid speed. No one likes a slow website, not me, not you. So why would you want your visitors to go through a slow website? You want them to get the best customer satisfaction. So there is a tool that you can use to check the speed of your website. It's called Test My Site Tool. You can go there, put your link, put your domain link, and check whether your website is of the appropriate speed or not. Now, if your website is, is slow, you've got a slow score, so how can you improve? Um, firstly, you could keep track of the load times of your landing page. So each page that you have, just keep a track. And then you optimize codes. Um, you can use a technical innovation such as AMP, which is Accelerated Mobile Pages. Vidush is going to talk more about AMP in the second part of the session. So, yes, you need to optimize your codes and use AMP so that it increases the speed of your mobile site. So this one was for mobile speed. And as you can see um, on the PowerPoint screen, uh, people who see that the website is going to take more than three seconds to load, you're going to, they're going to move to another website. Um, so yeah, mobile speed is very important. Next, the mobile design. The more attractive a mobile um, a website is, the more um, it's going to attract visitors. And it's going to keep the visitors on the website. Again, just like no one likes a slow website, no one likes a dull website as well. So focus on your mobile design. You may have a really cool website um, on desktop. So make sure it is optimized. The design that uh, your website designer have done, it is um, responsive on mobile as well. And of course, test it. We're going to um, move a bit about A-B testing, but yeah. It is important to see how users are responding to the design. Um, we all know that sometimes uh, when you see a website on desktop and when you see it on mobile, it's broken. It's very different. This is where you lose customers. And when you lose customers, you lose sales and you lose revenue. 
All right. So mobile speed, mobile design. Now we are going to talk about A-B testing. Why A-B testing? You're a developer, you know how important it is to test a website. Not just a website, to test everything before you put every, um, something live. So, um, understanding behavior is key. This is why it is important to carry out simple usability tests on your mobile site. And uh, I'm going to give you some tips on how you could do that. First, you can assign um, a user a specific task on the website. Um, for example, if you have a retail website where you, where you sell clothes, you can ask the tester to find yourself a specific uh, type of item, such as a winter coat. So from there, it activates the cognitive purchase process and it makes the test more genuine. You're going to see um, the process, how it is when someone has a specific intent, specific buying intent. And this is one of the tests that you could do. Also, um, the home page, so that's the second one, the home page of your website is often focused on campaigns instead of findability. What I mean by that is sometimes when you go through on websites, you see a lot of special offers which are bombarded, a lot of campaigns, deals, sales. It's great because you're showing your um, audience that you have a really cool sales going on um, that is going to end in 24 hours. But what if um, when you have visitors who have a specific intent, when they want to buy something specific and it's kind of difficult to find what they are looking for. So the key is user satisfaction. So from the from the beginning, from the moment they are on your website, you want them to have the best user experience till when they check out, till when they buy their item. So that process, you want it to be as seamless, as quick and simple. Basically, you want to facilitate the buying process of the visitor, of the customer. So. What you can do is, if you have popular categories that you know a lot of people um, buy, you can put it on the upper page of the website so customers can go quickly and find what they need. So facilitate their process. This is a way of optimizing your website for mobile. Next, uh, thirdly, uh, we have automated sliders. What are automated sliders? They are um, images where your visitors can just scroll and see. And images sometimes take very long time to load on the slider, especially if there are several images. So then you get a risk of visitors staring at a blank screen. So I would say a test that you could try is removing the automated sliders. That's another A-B test. And then you see how uh, visitors are responding to your website. And fourth, functionality to your search. Let's say, um, again, the example of a customer who knows exactly what he wants. Um, he's going to go directly on the search bar. Because he's looking for something specific, he already knows what he wants. So instead of having a range of products where he needs to browse a lot among products, among categories, to actually find what he's looking for, and we want to simplify his buying process. So it is important to have a search bar. Sometimes we see that on desktop, the search bar, sorry, on desktop, the search bar is um, very well visible. But when you go on your mobile, and you have to look for the search bar. So make sure that this functionality 
is very well um, developed and designed. Um, visitors who search are on average four times more likely to convert. So other functionalities that you could look into are spelling suggestions and previous searches. So if uh, someone has logged in when he needs to log in and has searched for something specific and then he logs out. So then the next time he's on your website, he's going to see a history of the searches. Again, this facilitates, simplifies the buying process. Um, next, um, a B test, a usability test that you could have is uh, testing using urgency. Um, urgency, why? Because different behaviors types will respond different, um, will respond differently. Not everyone responds the same way. Those tests are to monitor and track and to see how visitors are responding. So um, by A-B testing uh, using urgency, what I mean is showing limited editions, showing that there is a low stock, um, having a countdown when a sales ends, hey, we have a sales for just 24 hours going to end before midnight, and then you track you track how your visitors are responding to those kind of urgency. All right, and next, yeah, it's important to test, to do at least five usability tests because five is the magic number. No, but really, you need to test. And also, um, don't forget to reduce distractions on your website. What I mean by distractions, um, we are all familiar with website where we go on and there is a lot of pop, -up, pop ups everywhere. You have to like close the ads, close the pop ups to actually go, um, on the specific part of the website where you actually want to go. It is annoying and it takes much of your time. So the same way, if it's visitors bombarded with, um, for example, newsletter subscriptions, pop ups, prompts to share on social media, they will become distracted from the primary purpose, the purchase, because then they are going to click every, um, on someone on something else, going to go on, a on another page, and they eventually get lost in their purchase intent. So reduce the distractions. Yeah, so those were some uh, ideas and strategies for how you can test a b test your website for mobile optimization and the tools that you can use are is google optimize to set up your a b testing from there you're tracking google analytics so remember those tools test my site to check the speed of your website use google optimize to set up the a b testing and tracking google analytics so don't forget mobile optimization is really important nowadays, especially nowadays now that smartphone has become a very important aspect of every customer's life. So if you want to have more customer and higher conversion rates on your mobiles, it is important to do the mobile optimization. All right, that's all for me now. Vidush is going to talk about the second part of this session and then we'll both take um, questions from you at the end of the session. Thanks all. Bye. Hello, I'm back. Um, so I'm going to be talking about Google AMP, which is um, Google's accelerated mobile pages. Um, it's not something new, it's something that's been around for a while now and quite a few people are familiar with it. Um, it's basically the Google AMP um, project is basically a way to make sure that the mobile experience of browsing the internet, um, viewing websites, e-commerce or whatever is a lot better, a lot faster. So we are gonna, we are gonna just dive into what AMP is, how does it work and in this whole marketing focused session um, I thought it's a good idea to just go a little bit technical um, 
a really introductory level um, into what can you use to improve your um, website, for example, conversion rate and so on. Um, so Google AMP, what is it? Um, well, I already said a bit about what it is, but the question that surrounds it often is, um, well, is AMP a good thing or a bad thing? And uh, a sub question that crops up is, um, is AMP Google's way of trying to like um, take over the web? Um, is the web still open? Uh, that's that's debatable. From my perspective, is there are actually two different point of views that you can take on this or any technology really. There is the development, the technical point of view, which in which case um, there are conflicting opinions. Different people, different developers have their own way of thinking, their own bias, which is something completely normal for any technology, not just AMP. And um, there's the business side. So for this session, I won't go into the technical development side, but rather I would stay on the business aspect of AMP. And in that direction, is it a good thing or a bad thing? Um, so speaking about the business point of view, if you have a website, whether you are a blogger or you have an e-commerce or whatever the reason you need to have an online presence via a website, normally that would mean um, that you have certain expectations from your website. Most websites, the bottom line is always the same. You want more traffic, you want more engagement, you want more visibility. So these are normally the things that drive your website, that defines uh, the success of your site. And um, from again, from a business point of view, you will always work towards improving those statistics, those traffic and engagement and so on. Um, so a few things that you, you, you do um, that would help you is working on your loading speeds. Neha has already talked a little bit about that. And um, normally if your website is fast, it's responsive, you are sure, well, it's more likely rather that your customer or your user is going to stay on your website and uh, interact with your website. And the second thing, which is a basic thing, is making sure that you have mobile friendly interfaces. I'm, I'm not talking about having your website loading on a phone, just like it normally loads on desktop. No, it's, it's not just about your website loading. It's about your website being optimized for the mobile experience. It needs to be adapted. Um, you need to make sure that given you have lesser, um, less real estate, screen real estate, you are making optimum use of that, presenting what's important. So it needs to be properly designed and adapted for a mobile phone, not just, um, it should not just load, that's it. Um, one last thing that is really important is working on the user experience that your website delivers and the convenience for your users. So your website needs to be easy to use. Um, the, what's important needs to be upfront. It needs to be accessible and so on. You need to basically make sure that your users are uh, having a good time and easily they can use your website. Um, one final thing which is not on the slide is also about well, visibility, which uh, normally you would want to have some kind of several kinds of SEO optimization, search engine optimization um, put in place just to make sure that your website is more visible and uh, people can access it um, easily. Um, okay, so, so, so that's about your website's bottom line, what you want and how you can do that. but how does AMP fit into all of this? So the purpose behind AMP, the Google's AMP project, was, um, well, to tackle most of these issues and others that are not mentioned here, but like some of them um, tackling the clunky advertising that we see way too often on websites these days, pop-up ads that hinder your experience, that basically make the website uh, a bad experience overall to use. You want to get to the content. You don't want ads to just get in your way every time. Ads are good, but they need to be placed correctly. Um, poor responsiveness, so slow loading time, slow response time. When you do an action, you have to wait and wait, and then it responds. So this, this kind of thing drives away your users. And uh, 
AMP aims to improve the responsiveness, improve the loading time, and so on. And a bit related to that is catering for slow internet connection. It's um, commonly underestimated how many people in the world still use 2G connections and maybe 3G connections. So um, when you are developing for the web, you are not developing for a single country or single place, you are developing for the world. So you need to make sure that you thought about those people, which again, it's not a negligible portion of the market. So um, this is what AMP tries to do, among other things. Um, so how does AMP do that? How does AMP work? To put it simply, instead of loading your site uh, or your page rather directly from your site from your servers normally what happens is uh, google caches so it saves a version of your site uh, of your page in uh, as a cdn so in a cdn a content delivery network so it holds it and then what happens is when someone is trying to access your website instead of loading from your servers it's going to load from the cdn held by for example google or cloudflare um, if i'm not mistaken microsoft has, has joined um, the list of cdns that basically supply amp pages as well so this is this is kind of what it does this is the basic concept behind it um, of course there are a few other things but this is the basis of how amp works loading anything from a cdn which is super fast basically it's, it's almost guaranteed that it's going to improve the loading time um, now, how do they know which pages should they cache? Because I mean, they don't have unlimited space either, so they are going to select their pages. This is this is quite simple. It it, hap it happens during the development itself. So when you are creating your web page, normally what you do is add uh, the AMP AMP attribute or tag to the element, which tells Google when Google is crawling the web and caching sites and so on, it, it tells Google that this is an AMP page and this should be cached, you know, via um, how AMP works. So um, on a side note, you may have been using AMP uh, without even knowing. So if you look to the right of the slide, you'll notice that, for example, uh, on wired.com, self-driving cars, the complete guide, you'll notice there's a small lightning um, icon right next to the site name. This indicates that uh, the page is an AMP page. So you may have been using it without being aware of it, actually. Now, this this was how it works um, but what does this change what does this um, mean for a developer how does this affect our work um, not it, it doesn't mean um, a lot of changes basically you are still working with html just with uh, a few considerations for amp here and there um, for example certain elements need to be replaced by amp elements so um, there are reasons behind uh, which we'll get into in a bit, and you need to add some JavaScript file to your site. So we, we'll get a bit into the code as well. Um, so, okay, why, why do you need to replace those elements and so on? Why do you need to add the JavaScript? So what happens is um, AMP has certain conventions. We can rather call them rules because actually if you break them, your, your page is not an AMP page. So um, it has certain rules or conventions uh, whereby... Um, it's going to, in a way, uh, standardize the kind of experience it's trying to deliver. What I mean by that is, for example, by using, instead of using an image tag, normally, if you are going for AMP, you are going to have to use an AMP image. Um, so why, why, why this and what does it do is um, when the page is loading from the CDN, uh, basically, it knows it's an AMP page. So it's going to prioritize certain things over others. For example, it's going to prioritize content, written content over images or videos. This makes a whole lot of sense because those are the things that take time to load. Um, so that's why it's important to specify AMP elements. This, this kinds of directs the kind of experience they're trying to uh, deliver via AMP. Under the hood, what happens is when you use those AMP tags here and there, uh, you are telling Google that it, it normally it can go ahead and use its own custom lightweight version of those elements to do 
what it does. Um, okay, so let's let's try to see what the code would look, would uh, would look like um, with AMP. So the first thing is AMP in HTML. So that's that's important. Um, the second thing is adding the JavaScript. So from AMP project, uh, this is this is also extremely important. What, what happens is it's it's that JavaScript file that actually um, controls the loading process because we have this JavaScript file in your page. Uh, so the presence of that file is extremely important so that your page actually becomes an AMP page. Um, this is a small sample code where you can see it's an AMP page. You can already see HTML AMP lang en, so English. Uh, so this is an AMP page, legitimate. Uh, it has the JavaScript file, which is also important we already have been through that now one thing you'll notice is um it has this link rel canonical what, what's this about so um we we talked a lot about amp but uh normally what happens is this introduces even if it's simple the language is still html and so on this still introduces a little bit of complexity because now you may in certain cases have to manage two pages. So you are going to have the AMP page, which normally you want people to see on mobile, but then you are going to have your basic HTML page, which is more blown out with all kinds of things up there. So, um, and it's normal. You may have two pages, which, um, well, two versions of the page, which load based on the device or um, how the person is accessing your site. Um, this is where the canonical comes in. So by saying link rel canonical, you're basically saying that this page has another version, the canonical, the normal HTML version, not AMP. So, um, and then you provide the link for that. Um, this is kind of important as well because you are also helping Google while it's crawling the web and caching things and storing everything. You are also informing Google that, um, yeah, you, you don't always have to get from the cache and load the AMP the lightweight AMP version. There are times normally that the other will be used. Um, one other thing you might notice that's a bit different is the style. Um, so yeah, that's an important point. The, one of the rules of AMP is um, not to have external dependencies like JavaScript files or CSS. Uh, because when you have external files, this obviously introduces certain overhead in your loading time. So this is why uh, normally when you are using AMP, you are going to have um, your style in the same file. So either in the style tag uh, in the in the head, uh, in the style element in the head, or as an inline style. Um, you'll also notice that there is a small attribute added to it, the AMP boilerplate. So this is basically um, to inform Google that this style for for this particular style, um, well, it's um, it's meant to use app conventions. Uh, so this is an example of what you might see in terms of the style app boilerplate. Uh, you'll see it's it's um, it's already trying to um, in a way control how your site is being loaded. If you can read, if you can understand the code that's there. Um, so yeah, that's 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 a bit about the tags, <clears throat> the 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 format of the page rather. So. One thing we mentioned is the replacement of certain tags. So actually on, on Google's documentation on app.dev, if I'm not mistaken, um, normally they have a list of which tags are replaceable. Um, when I say replaceable, it's, it's not always an option. It, a lot of the times it's actually a necessity. You need to use the AMP versions. For example, image, you have to use the AMP image if you are you want an image in your AMP page. Um, and this comes with certain restrictions or rules. Um, for example, if you are using an AMP image, if you want your AMP page to be valid, you need to make sure that you specify the width uh, and height, basically specify the layout of that image. Why? The reason is quite simple and it makes a whole lot of sense. Um, Imagine, I mean, we've all probably been there, but you are using a website. You want to read some kind of content. Um, the website has technically loaded. You can see the text. So you start reading. Not everything has loaded yet, but 
you start reading so you start scrolling and then at some point the image finally loads and what it does is the image loads like on top and it displaces everything suddenly while you're scrolling you see things just shifting around to make place for that image that decided to load um, it happens it's, it's something very common um, on sites especially on mobile and on slow connections and it's not a good experience you are already into the content you're already reading you don't want things to move around you have to um, basically you get thrown out of context and it's not good and obviously a bad experience means a lost user a lost customer you don't want to lose them so what happens is by using amp they have these kinds uh, these kind of um, rules like specify the width and height specify the layout that takes care of this kind of um, problem issue so uh, as I mentioned it tries to take over how things are loaded prioritize certain things over others so it's going to prioritize text over images makes sense <clears throat> but what happens is it creates a placeholder as you can see for example on the on the right normally it's it's a bit something like that where it creates a placeholder a grayed out uh, image that already takes up the the amount of space that your actual image is going to take and this this solves this whole displacement shifting problem because when the image loads it's just its place is already reserved so it, it just loads there nothing moves nothing changes um, there are other things behind, besides um, besides AMP image. There is AMP video, AMP audio. There is even uh, certain restrictions on how you want to add advertisements, um, ads to your website. Um, so yeah, a list of all that is easily available. A lot of examples are available on their site. It's 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 really well documented, and they even have certain tutorials. Um, so now, let's say you got into AMP. You are developing AMP. Um, how do you know if your page is AMP ready, is valid? And what if it's not? How, what does this change for you? Uh, this is also extremely important. <clears throat> what happens is if your page is not a valid AMP page, so for example, you try to do and you try to create an AMP page, but you, you left an image as image, you did not use AMP image uh, because you're smart. <laughs> so what happens is um, uh, your page is not a valid AMP page because they don't allow image tags. Um, so what does this, should you care? You should, because actually if there is even a single one error on your page that basically says this is not a valid AMP page, your page is not AMP. So you don't get any of the benefits from AMPing up your page. Uh, your page does not get cached and um, nothing happens so your page is, ju is just treated as a regular HTML uh, a web page so if you want to take the benefits of AMP you need to make sure your page is a valid AMP page how do you do that is actually quite easy there are a few ways um, there is an AMP validator tool online uh, where you can specify your pages uh, your pages URL and well, basically, it's going to validate that page and say if it's uh, AMP or not. For, but that's for the pages that are already deployed already on the web. Um, for development, there are things like, for example, a Chrome extension for the AMP validator. So basically, uh, it integrates the AMP validator into your, your Chrome browser. And when you are developing, you can run that extension to check if your page is AMP or not. And it provides you with all of the errors and what's going on and so on in the console. So just regular, familiar experience for a web developer. Um, yeah, so AMP validator, uh, really useful and not to be ignored. Final thoughts, is AMP for you or for me? Yeah, we, we've been talking a lot of good things about AMP, about how it works and so on. But um, it, the, the, the short answer is no, not, not necessarily. What happens is, why is AMP here? The, the reason for AMP is to make sure your site loads fast, is responsive, your site is not cluttered, your site, uh, your users have a good experience and so on and so on. So if you already have a fast and responsive website with the normal HTML or maybe you're using HTML2 um, technology. So if you already have a fast and responsive website, 
or if you have like something like a PWA, a progressive web, web app, um, then maybe not. You, you don't really need to go into AMP because you don't have those problems. Your site loads just fast. Your, your users, are, they, they don't get bothered with popping ads. And <clears throat> so if you have a, a good site and you don't have this kind of feedback that your site takes too much time to load and so on, then no. You, you, you probably don't need AMP. But if you do have a website that takes a few, a few um, seconds extra to load or um, you, are having, you are getting some feedback from your users that it's not as good as they want it, then maybe you need to consider AMP. But it's, it's, not, a, it's not a rule set in stone that all sites need to be AMP. You need, you need to basically evaluate what is AMP gonna do for you and do you really need it? There are alternatives. So, um, so yeah, is AMP for you? Maybe you have to take into consideration everything. Um, so that's it for me. A small introduction about um, on uh, on AMP and how it works. Um, thank you for watching and for attending our session. Uh, we are gonna try to see if there have been a few questions on tweet. Uh, on Twitter and uh, we are going to take up those questions so if you want to send them now go ahead and thank you so and hey here we are um hey <laughs> yeah that was, that, was, really good. that was the first time I tried a session um on on marketing like from a from a technical point of view let's okay. see if we can get a hold of uh, of Neha uh, yes, I'm trying. We're calling her. I'll answer the question in the chat in the meantime. How popular AMP is? Is it being used by popular enterprises? Actually, um, yes, it is being used by a lot of common sites that um, a lot of people use. Sites like Wired, as I sh I've shown during the presentation, but then there is a uh, Pinterest, especially you see it especially on news websites and websites where people are going to read or, or have a lot of um, content consumption uh, rather than something like uh, an e-commerce. You would see it on those kind of sites. And uh, actually, um, if I'm not mistaken, on their site they do have a list. We of have how. Different. So hey. <laughs> yeah, Thanks. we have a list of different collaborators that worked um, with Google to to get AMP um, to exist. Uh, you can find a lot more information about how AMP came around on the AMP the dev, and uh, yeah, actually, even on their first page itself, you can see a lot of common sites: um, CNN, Washington Post, um, Doodle, even Axe Body Spray. <laughs> they are, yeah, they use AMP. Okay, well, um, Vidush Neha, we didn't get the chance to chit chat. We've been chit chatting yeah. the whole day, you and I. Come on. <laughs> fine, but like everyone doesn't know about what you do and stuff. But fine, let's start with Neha. Neha, yeah. I heard yeah. you, you got a startup. We talked a yes. bit about yesterday, but can you tell us more? Sure. Okay, so um, the name is Le Fintech Limited. It's a cool name. <laughs> so um, I have my co-founder, uh, Naya, with me. So we specialize in artificial intelligence uh, technology, especially chatbots. Okay. So uh, it's like you have a robot who talks to you. A cute robot oh, wow. is going to answer your questions and guide you um, through everything. Um, we actually um, want to automate the business processes of businesses, of SMEs and all. <clears throat> so, uh, um, for example, we have one cool product where if you want to um, order a pizza or burger or anything, you just have mm -hmm. to ask the chatbot and then um, it's going to guide you to order your pizza and then you can even proceed to a payment gateway. So it's really quick and very easy for customers as well. So That's in a nutshell, this is what the startup does, chatbots. That's I'm awesome. You guys, in, in one of the sessions in the other rooms, they are building a robot. Here she's building a chatbot. <laughs> that's how that's how it starts. 
I'm, that, I'm that's saying, how it started. <laughs> that's, that's how it started. <laughs> 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 2020 yeah, hasn't it. ended, right? <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, true. Um, yeah, Neha, it was great. First time presenting in DevCon for you, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, so. it was my first time and it was really cool. So, <laughs> too many more. Thanks so much. So, I'm, I'm, I'm getting some interesting yes, questions. Some questions. Yeah. Nice banner behind. Where are you buying drinks? This banner was here before DevCon. It's staying <laughs> here. <laughs> Again. <And> <laughs> And it's so already gone. Drinks from like way before. No, we invested it in Defcon. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, I'm not gonna do the host because <laughs> this was a shared session. Okay. Marine, do your thing. Yes. So Vidush, now you tell us a bit about your startup or your consulting. I think. Ah. Um. Yeah, it's not really a startup. Um, I don't like to call it a startup. Um, it's just an agency. What happens is, um, well, what, what happened is, uh, I used to work as a freelancer and I used to get quite a couple of projects. Then I started teaming up with other freelancers and consultants and we were working together. And then at some point we were getting so many projects that um, you basically, you, I wanted to not, I, I can't get involved in all of them. So I wanted to be able to leave the project with people who I'm working with. So the good thing to do <laughs> is to <laughs> legitimize all of that and register it as a business. So that's when we launched uh, Orion Consulting. Um, but speaking of startup, it's true that as Orion Consulting, we are working on actual startups. So new things that okay. are trying to innovate in, in different fields. Uh, if I'm going to be honest, if the lockdown and all of that did not uh, <laughs> did not like push us a bit behind uh, we would already have a first release but we are still planning to do it um, before end of year let's hope it, it okay. gets done uh, let's wait and see <laughs> okay awesome feels like you guys yeah. got a lot of a lot of stuff prepared oh yeah <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah first off Shervin when the startup gets launched, that's when I'm going to buy your drinks. And second, <laughs> second <laughs> if you guys are a bit more interested, like the viewers, if you are a bit more interested in um, how this happens, how someone goes to work independently, how do you go to startup, what's the thought process behind it, this kind of thing, there is actually a very interesting podcast tomorrow. I'm, a, I'm advertising for tomorrow's session right away. Um, at one, yeah. It's at 1 p.m. Uh, so on, on this channel, on it you as God itself. So be sure yeah. to tune in and check that out. I'm advertising it too. Everyone should <laughs> tune in. <laughs> it's going to be great. I'm not sure if I'm going to be the host or I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to play the, uh, the other side during that session. I'm warning you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So okay. let's. Um, thank you, guys. Do you have Thanks. any more to add before we leave? Neha, I'm gonna I'm gonna leave you to add any closing yeah, notes because I'm gonna still be here. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was was very great um, speaking for DevCon this year for the first time. So, like I said, too many more, and it was awesome to go to go speak with Vidush. <laughs> I hope it was. <laughs> yeah, it was. <laughs> So yeah, thanks everyone for um, listening to our sessions. Um, even if you have um, questions afterwards, if you're watching afterwards, you can always tweet uh, to me or Vidush and we'll answer your questions, of course. Yeah. Okay, of maybe course. Vidush can add your Twitter handle on the chat. That way yeah. sure. people can contact you after. Yeah. Yes, sure. Okay, well, thank you Bye, so much, then. Neha. Thanks. Thanks, Marine. Bye. Yeah. Bye. 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 Hey, Vidush. I'm back as a host now. Yeah, this yeah, was a really a interesting now. session. Um, hmm. It covered <laughs> it covered some topics that a lot of people needed to to know. Um, wanted to talk I, about. I feel Great like job. your head is getting bigger. I don't know if it's supposed to be. Guys, <laughs> yeah, the webcam. It 
happen. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> it was yeah. nice though. To go speak it was a good session. Was... I was listening. <laughs> and yeah, you you guys did a good job. And I sent the Twitter handles to the chat, so if anyone wants to get in touch with us. With that, I guess we can um, conclude this one. So we will have one last session for the day in 10 minutes, uh, starting at um, 17 o'clock, so 5 p.m., with Lovelish yep. Biari on Selenium. This is going to be interesting. I always wanted to look into Selenium. I've heard like good and bad things about it. Just being well, honest. Well, you get your <laughs> chance in 10 minutes. Yeah. So okay, see you guys, guys. then.